At the front gate, the hammering and clattering began. My spouse was banging on the door in a fit of rage. Are you serious? Please let me in now. Would you like this scene to be seen by everyone in the neighborhood? He was outside my family's house, raising a commotion on a cold Christmas Eve. Usually, Christmas brings us together to celebrate. But this year was ruined by something terrible I had found out a few days previously. My spouse's adultery was revealed to me when I happened upon an envelope. I felt helpless and deceived in my roles as a mother and a wife. He pretended to be working late, but in reality, he was barely making enough money to buy our kids presents since he was blowing our savings on his affair. With my family watching, I threw open the door and faced him there because I could take the pain no more. Tension was in the air. Playing the ignorant, he inquired, what's happening? Up until that point, life as a typical housewife with my spouse had our two children look simple. Some people may balance their relationships by spending Christmas Day with family and Christmas Eve with a lover, contingent on cultural or personal beliefs. My siblings and I were raised in a home that did not observe traditional holidays. Due to our parents' hectic work schedules, we developed the custom of cooking together, eating cake, and watching special year-end television programs to celebrate Christmas over winter break. Christmas Eve with my spouse and our child used to be a happy occasion as I got older and established my own family. But as the years went by, our relationship's core changed from being romantic to being more family-oriented. Christmas Eve progressively shifted from being about us to being about making sure our kids were happy. We adjusted and decided that the happiness of the children came first. Therefore, I didn't first find it strange when my husband casually suggested that he might be stuck at work overnight on the 28th. It appeared to be yet another turn in our changing holiday customs. Even though I wasn't extremely upset about it, learning of his betrayal made our vacation into a starkly confronting and illuminating experience. My husband's absence from our home on Christmas Eve made me realize how much our relationship had changed. I still had a strong affection for him despite everything that had changed, and I was happy living with him. So I committed myself to making Christmas happy for our children, accepting it as another kind of delight. Is this all the money we have this month for living expenses? Has there been an issue with your paycheck? Trying not to sound too critical, I asked. Expenses always appeared to rise as the year came to a finish. And with Christmas quickly approaching, I was hoping we could make some additional financial room. My spouse had set aside a significantly smaller amount of money than normal for living expenses, which shocked me. I nudged him to see if there was any way I could handle this. I would possess items, I murmured. There are one-time expenditures for the new year, as well as work-related expenses. Do you think I like having to make such drastic cuts? As a housewife, managing our budget with little funds had become a crucial aspect of my job. Visibly stressed, my husband steered clear of the conversation. You're correct, I apologize. I'll try my hardest, but keep in mind that Christmas is almost here and the kids are excited about their gifts. For their benefit, let's make this season unforgettable. I do not want us to be unable to pay for their presents. We typically have a rule in our household that says the children have to give us an explanation for their requests. On the other hand, they can request anything for Christmas and their birthdays. I was determined to make sure we had enough money to fulfill their requests because of their intense devotion to Christmas. Let's exercise a little more restraint in our spending, I proposed. What do you want for Christmas, kids? With a groan, my spouse gathered the children. Dad, I want a picture book about railroads and a cartoon DVD set, too. Which do you consider to be superior? The book, without a doubt. You can share it with your friends, and it will assist you in learning to read. Even better, you could read it to your younger pals. 
you would make a really nice big boy. Our daughter, looking a little disturbed, added, I really want a new doll set so I can feed it and sleep with it. But my crayons broke recently, and now I can't draw. Crayons would be great, in my opinion. Carol, you have such artistic talent, I said, attempting to strike a compromise between their desires and our financial limitations. We worked through the difficulties of the season together, and these times reflected the basic yet profound rewards of parenthood. Observing my daughter's sketch, I advised her to ask Santa for some better quality crayons than the ones she was using previously. She was eyeing a new set of dolls, though. But what about the dolls? Can't you listen to what I want? Santa only visits good children. Naughty kids who are selfish get nothing, I reassured her. Let's ask for the crayons first. While I tried to balance the children's wishes, my husband nudged them towards more affordable options. Brian's gift can come from a used bookstore, and Carol's gift can be from the store, he suggested quietly, implying that this approach would help us avoid overspending during the festive season. Do you think spending money is the only solution? He murmured under his breath, making sure only I could hear, labeling our children's eagerly awaited gifts as mere extra expenses. He subtly steered their young minds to fit his frugal agenda, which started to sow seeds of resentment in me. One evening, as my husband bathed our daughter, she came running with a sparkly envelope she found in his work bag. Mom, look, could it be from Santa? Although it was wrong for her to rummage through his things, my curiosity was piqued. I told her, you shouldn't have taken that without asking. Give it here and I'll put it back. But when I took the envelope, curiosity overcame me and I peeked inside. It was a reservation for a Christmas dinner for two at a hotel on the 28th, the night he was supposedly working. Questions and doubts flooded my mind. Just then, a notification pinged from my husband's phone. Startled, I glanced over. It was getting a flurry of messages. Normally, I wouldn't pry, but unease compelled me to check. All the messages were from someone named Tiffany, accompanied by heart emojis, and a profile picture of a woman much younger than myself. The pieces began to fall into place, painting a troubling picture. With each passing day, I found myself sneaking glances at his phone, confirming my suspicions. Tiffany was likely his mistress, and he planned to spend Christmas Eve with her, even hinting at a special gift. Driven by a mix of hurt and determination, I hired a private investigator. Catching my overly confident husband in the act seemed the only way to confront this painful reality squarely. The days leading up to Christmas were filled with a mix of dread and resolve as I prepared to face whatever truths the investigation would uncover. When the investigation results arrived, they confirmed my worst fears. Tiffany was an employee at my husband's company, and their affair had started just a month ago. All those late nights he claimed to be working were spent with her. The sudden reduction in our household funds was likely funneling into his affair. Holding the investigator's report, tears of frustration and betrayal spilled over. In just a month, my husband had shifted his priorities so drastically, favoring another woman over his own family. My diligent care for our home, under the belief that he was burdened with work, and our children's quiet longing for time with their father now seemed tragically misplaced. The revelation of his betrayal was too profound to overlook. Initially, I was paralyzed by the shock, but soon determination took hold. I wasn't going to let this go without taking action. Drying my tears, I channeled my energy into planning a decisive response. On the morning of December 28th, I maintained a normal front as I sent my husband off to work. But once he was gone, I took the kids and moved to my parents' house. It's been so long since we've all been together like this. My mom exclaimed as we arrived. The festive spirit at my parents' home was uplifting. We spent the day decorating a large Christmas tree 
and enjoying a joyous Christmas party. The next morning, the children were overjoyed by the gifts under the tree. A DVD and a picture book for my son, and a doll and crayons for my daughter, all presented as gifts from Santa and also from their grandparents. As the children played happily with their new toys, the adults watched with content smiles. Then my phone buzzed. Stepping outside to answer, I heard my husband's distressed voice. Hey, where are you? I just got home from work, but my key doesn't fit the lock and the doorbell isn't working. What's going on? I could hear him fumbling with the door handle through the phone. Calm down, you're making a lot of noise. No one is there because we don't live there anymore. We finished moving out yesterday. You were too busy with work to notice. And by the way, if you keep shaking that door, it might break. If it breaks, it's not my problem. I replied, a mix of sternness and mockery in my voice. As I watched my daughter's sketch, I encouraged her to ask Santa for some nice crayons, even better than the ones she had before. She was also eyeing the new doll set. But what about the dolls? Can't you listen to what I want? She said, Santa only visits good children. Naughty kids who are selfish get nothing. I reassured her. Let's ask for the crayons first. While I tried to balance the children's wishes, my husband nudged them towards more affordable options. Brian's gift can come from a used bookstore and Carol's gift can be from the store. He suggested, quietly implying that this approach would help us avoid overspending during the festive season. Do you think spending money is the only solution? How foolish, he murmured under his breath, making sure only I could hear, labeling our children's eagerly awaited gifts as mere extra expenses. He subtly steered their young minds to fit his frugal agenda, which started to sow seeds of resentment in me. One evening, as my husband bathed our daughter, she came running with a sparkly envelope she found in his work bag. Mom, look, could it be from Santa? Although it was wrong for her to rummage through his things, my curiosity was piqued. I told her, you shouldn't have taken that without asking. Give it here and I'll put it back. But when I took the envelope, curiosity overcame me and I peeked inside. It was a reservation for a Christmas dinner for two at a hotel on the 28th, the night he was supposedly working. Questions and doubts flooded my mind. Just then, a notification pinged from my husband's phone. Startled, I glanced over. It was getting a flurry of messages. Normally I wouldn't pry, but unease compelled me to check. All the messages were from someone named Tiffany, accompanied by heart emojis and a profile picture of a woman much younger than myself. The pieces began to fall into place, painting a troubling picture. With each passing day, I found myself sneaking glances at his phone, confirming my suspicions. Tiffany was likely his mistress, and he planned to spend Christmas Eve with her, even hinting at a special gift. Driven by a mix of hurt and determination, I hired a private investigator. Catching my overly confident husband in the act seemed the only way to confront this painful reality squarely. The days leading up to Christmas were filled with a mix of dread and resolve as I prepared to face whatever truths the investigation would uncover. When the investigation results arrived, they confirmed my worst fears. Tiffany was an employee at my husband's company, and their affair had started just a month ago. All those late nights he claimed to be working were spent with her. The sudden reduction in our household funds was likely funneling into his affair. Holding the investigator's report, tears of frustration and betrayal spilled over. In just a month, my husband had shifted his priorities so drastically, favoring another woman over his own family. My diligent care for our home, under the belief that he was burdened with work, and our children's quiet longing for time with their father now seemed tragically misplaced. The revelation of his betrayal was too profound to overlook. Initially, I was paralyzed by the shock, but soon determination took hold. 
I wasn't going to let this go without taking action. Drying my tears, I channeled my energy into planning a decisive response. On the morning of December 28th, I maintained a normal front as I sent my husband off to work. But once he was gone, I took the kids and moved to my parents' house. It's been so long since we've all been together like this. My mom exclaimed as we arrived. The festive spirit at my parents' home was uplifting. We spent the day decorating a large Christmas tree and enjoying a joyous Christmas party. The next morning, the children were overjoyed by the gifts under the tree. A DVD and a picture book for my son and a doll and crayons for my daughter, all presented as gifts from Santa and also from their grandparents. As the children played happily with their new toys, the adults watched with content smiles. Then my phone buzzed. Stepping outside to answer, I heard my husband's distressed voice. Hey, where are you? I just got home from work, but my key doesn't fit the lock and the doorbell isn't working. What's going on? I could hear him fumbling with the door handle through the phone. Calm down, you're making a lot of noise. No one is there because we don't live there anymore. We finished moving out yesterday. You were too busy with work to notice. And by the way, if you keep shaking that door, it might break. If it breaks, it's not my problem. I replied, a mix of sternness and mockery in my voice. I followed my parents to the front door, bracing for a confrontation. As my father swung the door open, my husband stood there with a defiant smirk on his face. Long time no see, Dad, he said with a sly grin. But my father's response was icy. It's not good to see you. Stop pretending we're friends. You're no longer a son to us just someone who hurt our family, he interrupted sharply. My mother joined in, her tone harsh and unyielding. Causing a scene at this hour, do you even know what time it is? It's incredibly rude. The kids have been asleep for hours. You're not fit to be their father, she declared, staring him down with a stern glare that shocked my husband, accustomed as he was to her usual gentleness. I won't let my grandchildren witness this anymore. Leave now. You're a nuisance and no longer part of this family. My father-in-law stated calmly, his voice tinged with anger, making it unmistakably clear that it was time for my husband to go. Faced with the united front of my family, my husband's expression darkened as if he might lash out. But before he could respond, my mother-in-law spoke up firmly. I'm calling the police right now. Seeing her reach for the phone, panic overtook him, and he fled the scene without uttering a single apology, a stark reminder of his true character. At that moment, I didn't shed any more tears. Instead, a profound sense of emptiness enveloped me, leaving me to ponder the purpose of all I had endured. How about some warm tea, and then you can get some rest? My mother suggested gently, touching my shoulder with a comforting smile. The warmth and understanding from my family enveloped me as I retreated to my room, grateful for their unwavering support. Meanwhile, my now estranged husband, finding himself without a home, attempted to return to his parents' house, only to discover that they had changed the locks. After hearing my side of the story, they turned him away, unwilling to let a stranger disrupt their peace. Left out in the cold, my husband finally grasped the gravity of his actions and the weight of his parents' words. Now truly understanding the consequences, he expressed sincere regret and agreed to the terms of our divorce without a legal battle. I had a lawyer prepared just in case, but fortunately, the proceedings concluded smoothly. I began anew in my parents' house, a sanctuary for myself and my children. Here, amidst the challenges of balancing work and parenting, every day brims with purpose, supported by the love and help of my parents. Life is bustling, but deeply fulfilling. Even though my marriage has ended, and I will not see my ex-husband again, I maintain a strong connection with my former in-laws. They are wonderful grandparents, 
offering not just love to my children, but also tremendous support to me. Despite the official documents declaring us no longer family, I cherish their presence in our lives and hope they remain a constant, watching the children grow and flourish. Do you both have everything? Let's go, and don't forget to say goodbye to Grandma and Grandpa. I remind my kids as we get ready to leave their house. Bye, we call out, and I send a silent prayer for these peaceful, ordinary days to continue indefinitely. I look forward to celebrating next Christmas together, imagining the bright smiles on my children's faces as we gather around. A testament to our resilience and the new bonds we forged. This thought alone adds a lightness to my step, fueling my hope for many joy-filled years ahead.